Hello there. This is a follow-up video from Getting Fitter with Good Breathing for runners and people practicing endurance sports. Today I'm going to talk about two studies on using exclusively nose breathing when running, which were conducted by researchers working with Professor George Dallum at Colorado State University. Now, as a Buteco breathing teacher, my advice to everyone is to breathe through your nose when you're exercising because nose breathing is good, healthy breathing. But even if nose breathing is the healthy option, athletes, runners and competitive sportsmen always ask the question, but will nose breathing affect my performance? Well, based on research by Professor Dallum's team, my answer is that in the long run, your performance won't be any different if you breathe through your mouth or your nose. But of course, there are benefits to nose breathing. Firstly, it's well known that it decreases exercise-induced bronchospasm and exercise-induced asthma. And secondly, during steady state running, this study revealed that nose breathing reduced oxygen consumption by about 4%. So nose breathing is more efficient. Nose breathing is certainly something you may want to consider introducing into your training regime. I'll look at the research studies in more detail later, but first some tips on how to train to become a nose breather. In order to change to nose breathing, your body's going to have to adapt and adaptation takes time and training. Runners in the study found that complete adaptation to nose breathing at all levels of intensity ranged from six weeks to six months. The most effective approach is to slow everything down to a level just below where you feel air hunger, then gradually increase work rate as the sensations go away. You can monitor this by occasionally training on a treadmill using a progressive workup where you increase your work in stages. It's worth noting that when you first start, it's likely that your nose will run and that's normal and it'll decrease over a few weeks. Another thing that can be helpful is to take small sips of water and hold them in your mouth when you're running, as this encourages you to keep your lips closed without too much thinking about it. You may need to use a saline rinse daily to rinse any debris and mucus from your nose until your nose has cleared, which may take a few weeks. You can use nasal strips and internal dilators to open the nasal flares, but Professor Dallum suggests reserving these for high intensity sessions and racing. Now for the studies. The first research study I'm going to look at is the triathlete case study. An opportunity arose for Professor Dallum's team to study a 53 year old male competitive triathlete who had changed to exclusive nose breathing in order to prevent exercise-induced bronchospasm. And this case study was published in 2016. The triathlete had competed in the sport successfully for 31 years at the start of the study. He reported training each week for three to five hours in running, approximately three hours swimming and six to 10 hours of cycling. And he'd done this continually for 31 years. Two research protocols were developed for this triathlete case study, a maximal protocol and a steady state protocol, which I'll talk about later. The results of this study showed that a highly trained competitive triathlete could adapt to running whilst only breathing through his nose. And when running at both a maximal effort and a high level steady state effort, there was no loss in performance but the benefit for this triathlete was that nose breathing stopped his exercise-induced bronchospasm. The second research study is the Recreational Runners Study. To look into this further, the researchers sought out recreational runners who had been training and racing using only nose breathing for at least six months prior to the study. And that was difficult. It seemed these people were quite rare. But eventually they found 10 people, five men and five women to take part in a study. And the results of this study were published in 2018. 
The protocols developed in the triathlete case study were used. In the maximal protocol, the runners completed a graded exercise test designed to elicit a maximum workload and oxygen uptake within six to 10 minutes on a motorized treadmill. 10 minutes after the maximal protocol, the runners completed a steady state protocol. The steady state protocol was designed to allow the runners to work at an achievable high level pace whereby they could reach steady state levels. When running using nose breathing, the runners had their mouths taped. When running using mouth breathing, the runners wore a nose clip. These are the results. There was no significant difference seen between mouth and nose breathing in the time to exhaustion, or peak oxygen uptake, or peak heart rate, or peak lactate. Respiratory rate, ventilation and carbon dioxide production were lower when the runners were nose breathing. In the steady state, no significant difference was seen in perceived exertion, heart rate or lactate. Oxygen uptake, respiratory rate and carbon dioxide production were lower when the runners were nose breathing. Although the runners used less oxygen when nose breathing, their performance was just as good, which was an unexpected finding. It appears nose breathing utilizes oxygen more efficiently to get the same result. And on the face of it, there may be the possibility of improved performance. So in conclusion, this study was the first to evaluate people who had already trained themselves to breathe through their nose while running. And that was unlike all previous studies. The runners in these studies were able to achieve the same peak work and peak oxygen uptake, breathing exclusively through their mouth or breathing exclusively through their nose. An unexpected additional finding was that when the runners used exclusively nose breathing, they experienced this 4% improvement in physiological economy. And further research will be needed to find out if this is a potential way to improve performance in endurance events where economy is a critical performance factor. Interesting stuff. Take care. Bye now.